Aston Martin's Formula 1 results have trailed off alarmingly recently. Fernando Alonso suggests the mid-season change of tyre specification might be to blame for it falling back. Aston Martin bagged podium finishes in six of this season's first eight races, but in the three events since Alonso finished second to Max Verstappen in the Canadian Grand Prix, Aston Martin hasn't got anywhere near the top three. Before the Hungarian Grand Prix, Alonso promised improved performance thanks to the low and medium speed corners and short straights of the Hungaroring playing to the car's strengths. But instead, it was Aston Martin's worst weekend of the year in terms of results. Alonso's verdict after the race is that Aston Martin is now fifth best behind Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari and McLaren. So are the modified Pirelli tyres really to blame for Aston Martin's slump? Alonso first suggested the tyres might have had an impact on the competitive order at the British Grand Prix, where the new, more robust specification of Pirelli tyre was introduced. After a disappointing qualifying result in Hungary, Alonso said there was no doubt Aston Martin had taken a step backwards. He also pointed out the coincidence that when the new Pirelli tyres came in at Silverstone, there are a couple of teams that are struggling more and a couple of teams that are very happy. In addition to Aston Martin, he suggested it had also impacted F1's top team, saying Red Bull has clearly been hit with those tyres and that things have been, as he put it, a little bit unnormal since Silverstone. Alonso also indicated the tyres had changed the feel of the car. As he put it, you can feel the car a little bit different with the tyres. But again, he caveated that with the admission that it is difficult to be neutral and that Aston Martin hasn't improved the car as much as it needed to. He again pointed to Red Bull missing out on pole position to Lewis Hamilton as supporting his argument. However, on race day, Verstappen romped to his biggest win of the season by over half a minute. The question is whether the tyre change really has hurt Aston Martin or if Alonso's using it as more of a smokescreen. Pirelli modified its 2023 tyres because of the unexpected increase in downforce generated by F1 cars thanks to the rapid rate of development. Despite rule changes that hit the effectiveness of the ground effect underfloors by raising the floor edges and diffuser throat for 2023, Pirelli says the increase in aero load compared to last year is around 15%. Pirelli therefore started work on a new specification to make them more robust, deal with these increased loads and to reduce the risk of failures as lap times improve further. These new tyres were tested by all teams during Friday practice in June's Spanish Grand Prix and introduced at Silverstone. Pirelli will not go into detail on exactly what changed for intellectual property reasons, but Pirelli F1 boss Mario Isola confirmed it was a change in one material used in the construction of the tyre. That also led to a small increase of weight of each tyre by 400 grams. However, everything else about the tyre, including the compounds, remains the same as before. Isola also said there was no evidence the new tyres have changed the competitive balance. Instead, he suggests it reflects the rate at which upgrades are being introduced, which is continually shuffling the competitive order. But of course, Pirelli would say that. So do the other teams agree with Alonso or support Pirelli's position? The obvious place to start is with Red Bull. Paul Monaghan, Red Bull's chief engineer, conceded there was the possibility the tyre change had made a difference, but he was quick to point to the rapid development rate and the impact that has had on the order. He also said of the tyres that there was no radical shape change which gives aerodynamic difficulties. So we asked Monaghan about the overall impact of the tyre change and whether it necessitated setup changes. He said some small setup changes have been made to accommodate them, but nothing unusual. He described them as relatively small. Given Verstappen then sprinted into the distance in the race in Hungary, it's clear Red Bull hasn't been adversely affected by the changes. Alpine Sporting Director Alan Pomain said similar things, describing the tyre change as very subtle and doubted they were a huge factor in the shake-up of the competitive order. And Alpha Tauri's head of trackside engineering, Jonathan Edels, also called any resultant setup changes subtle and the impact minimal. McLaren team principal Andrea Stella took a similar position, saying that there's no reason to think that the tyre change had a significant impact on performance. Both publicly and privately, this is representative of the consensus of opinion within the F1 paddock. And even Aston Martin's own head of vehicle performance, Tom McCulloch, said the team didn't see huge differences when they first tried the tyres in Spain and confirmed that any setup changes have been quite small. The fact that nobody is making big setup changes is significant. If the tyre construction change had significantly affected the cars, it would have required adaptation. Tyre changes can influence more than just car balance. Thanks to the significance of the aerodynamic turbulence coming off the front wheels, even a small change can impact the whole aerodynamic map of the car. What's more, a change in tyre shape can affect ride heights or require big changes in the camber or associated suspension settings, given how essential the tyre contact patch is. 
The overall stiffness of the tyre can also shift and cause problems. In the past, in-season tyre changes have had a significant impact. For example, in 2013, there was a major change to the Pirellis after multiple tyre failures at the British Grand Prix that required modifying the shape of the tyre. This had an impact both on the aerodynamics and ride heights. This is because the change had to be more dramatic, but that's not the case this year. Nothing anyone is saying indicates that the change has been significant, and while Alonso may be able to feel something has changed in the car given the driver is, after all, the most sensitive sensor on the grid, it's clear that any slight impact of the tyre change is dwarfed by the development war that's raging between the top teams. The tyres have always been a convenient thing to blame. So where does this leave Aston Martin? Well, as team principal Mike Crack told us after the Hungarian Grand Prix, it's a reality check for the team that proves it has slipped back further than expected. That's not a reality check in the vague sense of the term. Instead, it reflects the fact that the team was confident of a better race performance even after a relatively poor qualifying. Indeed, Crack pointed to the relatively small gap to the front in terms of pace as proof Aston Martin had not fallen back, simply that the competition had got a little closer. Its deficit of just over half a percent in qualifying was broadly in line with the average over the season. But after finishing in the race, Crack admitted Aston Martin expected the Hungaroring to be more competitive for the team, and so this race was a disappointment. He pointed to the time lost in a straightforward race, 70 seconds over 70 laps, as proof of how much work there is to do. And he said, I would not blame it on the tyres because that would be too easy. He also said that even if the cars are remixed after the tyre change, perhaps one that impacts the aero, you have to adjust in F1. There are possible mitigating factors for Aston Martin's disappointing weekend. While the Hungaroring should have played to many of its strengths, the Aston Martin has sometimes struggled at tracks with a broad range of corner speed profiles because its ride height setup window isn't as wide as it would like. Attempts have been made to improve that, and possibly the combination of that and the fact that Hungaroring is a high downforce track worked against it, so it could be that Aston Martin underestimated the challenge. But it is clear that with McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari all having made improvements and Red Bull continuing to make steps, Aston Martin has not kept up. The team has plenty more upgrades planned for most of the upcoming races. Given its last major upgrade was in Canada, there could be some good steps to come. Nothing stands still in F1, and even Alonso admitted that now it's down to the team to fight back. And all the evidence suggests Aston Martin being leapfrogged in F1's fierce development war, plus a need to re-optimise its car since upgrading it for Canada, are the real reasons for Aston Martin's mid-season slump. What's more, Alonso simply blaming the tyres risks giving the team an easy excuse, something Mike Crack was explicitly at pains to avoid doing, when really all Aston Martin needs to do is redouble its efforts. And given how strong a team this is now, especially with how compressed the pack chasing Red Bull is in terms of performance, there's no doubt it has the capability to fight back. <laughs>